Yeah, coming back to the topic, uh, in last lecture we have seen up to permanent banded moving coil instrument and uh, in that uh, the disadvantage we have seen that it is a high cost compared to moving ion instrument. So we are going to see about moving ion instrument or MI instruments. <coughs> it is most commonly used laboratory instrument because of its uh, low cost, uh, high, high accuracy in values and uh, ruggedness of its uh, uh, construction. And uh, there are two basic classification of your MI instrument, that is moving ion instrument or moving ion attraction type of instruments and moving ion repulsion type of instruments. Firstly, we see what is moving ion attraction type of instrument. So, it, uh, it has a flat coil and narrow slat op slot opening and uh, the moving ion uh, is a flat disc. The moving ion which is, uh, which is used to uh, reflect, the po reflect the pointer is going to be a flat disc which is eccentrically mounted on that. Uh, uh, your uh, needle or uh, other fixer and moving coils and when the current flows through the coil the magnetic field is produced which attracts the moving ion so as the current flows the uh, 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 magnetic field is produced which is going to attract the moving ion towards it and makes the pointer it and makes the pointer to move from its uh, zero position this is what the operation that is happening in moving ion that is the attraction due to the magnetic field, the process of attraction is happening in the uh, your uh, needle or pointer with the help of moving ion. So the movement caused due to the process of attraction is termed as uh, uh, moving ion attraction type of instrument. So the controlling torque is here. Uh, it is going to be produced uh, with the screen what we have seen uh, already in the power and magnetic moving coil. There also the controlling torque is produced with the help of this uh, screen uh, attached to the instrument. And the air friction damping is provided by aluminum piston. So here damping is provided with the help of the aluminum piston that is connected to the instrument. And here is the construction or uh, construction of your moving an instrument. Uh, this is the scale which is used to show the value of either it can be voltmeter or ammeter. Your voltmeter means voltage value, ammeter means current value. And here is the pointer in which in which it is connected to the moving ion. And here is the balance weight in order, in order to balance the value. And here is the piston which is used here to provide damping force. And this is the air damping chamber which is uh, uh, helpful in uh, damping the oscillation that is produced in this needle. And uh, here is the control weight which is uh, used to control the uh, your uh, <coughs> uh, movement of your pointer. And uh, this, is, this, is, this, is, this is what uh, the attraction type of MI instrument that is uh, when the this movement of uh, this, is, this is the piston which is going to uh, attract the pointer towards it uh, in order to show the value in this case. And uh, here only there will be the mirror which is used to avoid parallax error. This is what the construction of your uh, moving ion type of instrument that is attraction type moving ion instrument. And coming to repulsion type moving ion instrument it has two veins. Uh, one is fixed vein and the other one is movable vein. And when the current flows through the coil, both the veins get magnetized. And uh, when it is magnetized uh, uh, with the uh, same magnetic uh, magnetic uh, field, uh, then uh, there will be the force of repulsion exists between these two vans. And this will result in the movement of mobile van, thus the pointer moves. So, there the pointer is moved with the help of attraction force, whereas here the pointer is moved with the help of repulsion force. Mm, that, that is why it is termed as repulsion type of instrument and most commonly used uh, two different designs of repulsion type of MI instruments are radial band and coaxial band. That is based on the arrangement of your band, uh, it is termed as radial band or coaxial band. Now we see the diagram of radial and coaxial band. So this is this is what diagram of the radial band and uh, it shows the side view as well as top view of your radial band repulsion type of mini ion instrument. So it has a, a movable van it has been here and a fixed van which is connected on the coil and it is, it is being fixed over the coil. Here it is a fixed van which is fixed over the coil and this is the movable van which is connected to the spindle in which the spindle is connected to the pointer. And uh, it has been radially placed uh, that is why it is termed as these two vans are placed uh, radially that is why it is termed as radial van repulsion type of MI instrument. Whereas coming to coaxial van, the uh, the gray, I mean uh, your um, fixed van and movable van are placed coaxial. That is in the uh, I mean uh, it is it is forming the axis. This is uh, what the construction of your uh, uh, coaxial van. And uh, here is the spring bar spindle in which it is being placed at the center, which is connected to the pointer. So the movement of this movable van in turn. Uh, will turn the 
spindle and will in turn which moves the pointer. This is what the construction of radial van and uh, coaxial van propulsion type of instrument. And coming to radial van, it has two vans as we said earlier, Dixel and Movable van uh, that are radially strips of ion and uh, the strips are being placed within the coil uh, as you see in the, as you see in the diagram. And Dixel van is attached to the coil, Movable van is attached to the spindle which it is attached by the uh, attached to the pointer. That will, this is how the operation of radial van is going to work. And coming to coaxial van type, uh, here also there will be two van, fixed and movable van on the sections of your coaxial cylinder. Uh, that is why it is termed as coaxial van. And controlling torque is produced by the spring. However, gravity control also been used uh, in vertical mounted instruments. So, if it is going to be vertically mounted instruments, so gravity control is, will be used in prop spring control. And damping torque is provided by air, air friction damping. And the eddy current uh, damping cannot be used in MA instrument because uh, the permanent magnet is required for eddy, eddy current damping. This permanent magnet can distort the operating of your magnetic field. That is why it is not suitable for your uh, MA instrument. And moving ion instrument can be used for both AC and DC measurement. Whereas in a uh, permanent magnet moving coil instrument, we have seen it is used for only DC measurement. Where your moving ion instrument it can be used for both AC as well as DC measurement. And because uh, whatever may be the direction of current through the coil, the iron bands get magnetized. So, the direction of current, it is uh, independent of the direction of current. So, it can be used for both AC as well as DC measurement. And coming to the torque equation of your moving ion instrument, uh, the mechanical work done is given by the formula torque into change in the angle of deflection. That is a uh, deflection torque into change in angle of deflection. Uh, that is Td into d theta. So applied voltage is given by that is voltage applied to the system is given by E is equals to d by dt of L into I, where L is the instrument inductance inductance of your instrument, and I is the initial current in the in, the, uh, in your instrument. So applied voltage is equals to change in value with respect to L into I with respect to time dt. So <coughs> Since L and I are variables, both L and I are variables, we have to multiply this change in uh, uh, inductance as well as current with respect to time. So, it is given by I into DL divided by DT plus L into DI divided by DT. This forms equation 3. And so, the electrical energy supplied uh, is given by that is, we have seen the voltage. Energy is nothing but uh, uh, voltage into current with respect to time, change in time. That is why it is termed as E into I into dt. E is voltage, I is current and dt is uh, change in time which will be equal to we know the formula for E. E is nothing but I into dl divided by dt uh, plus L into di divided by dt. This is from equation 3 uh, into your current into change in time. So, this is uh, why so, uh, I mean, uh, solving this equation we get this dt and dt is get cancelled. So, we multiply it inside. So, I am multiplying the current value inside. So, we get I square into dl plus li into di. So, this is what the formula for your energy supply. So, the change in uh, stored energy due to change in inductance. So, this stored energy we can be changed uh, by changing the value of inductance. So, the your equation will become half into L into I square to half into L, in, L plus dl into I plus di whole square. This is what uh, the range of your change in inductance. So, change in stored energy will become uh, will be equal to that is a uh, stored energy change will be equal to I L into D I plus 1 by 2 into I square D L. So, while we are applying this, va uh, this value in this uh, change in inductance, the uh, so energy stored value will become like this while solving it and uh, from the principle of conversion of energy. So, conversion of energy principle, the energy, uh, electrical energy supply will be equal to electrical energy stored plus uh, mechanical work done. That is what uh, the electrical energy supply to the system. So, this is nothing but equation 4 will be equal to equation 5 plus equation 1. We have all these equations we have already solved. So, substituting this equation, this is equation 4 I square into dl plus IL into di will be equal to uh, I equation 5 plus 1. This is equation 5. IL into di plus 1 by 2 I square into dl plus Td into d theta. So, this is what uh, based upon the conversion of energy. So, this uh, common factors are being cancelled and we get uh, by solving this equation we get Td into t, d theta is equals to 1 by 2 into I square into dl. So, from this we can find the value of deflecting torque. So, deflecting torque is equals to 1 by 2 into I square into 
dl divided by d theta that is what is mentioned here and controlling torque is equals to tc uh, it is represented by tc this uh, controlling torque equation is done with the help of spring so it is similar to the aspect of a permanent magnet moving coil what we have seen in uh, last lecture so controlling torque is same value ks into theta that is uh, your spring uh, control constant into your deflection angle so at equilibrium that is uh, when the pointer is going to rest at uh, some point at that point uh, your uh, controlling torque will be equal to your deflecting torque that, that, that then then only your pointer will come to rest position so substituting the values uh, controlling torque and deflecting torque ks into theta is equals to 1 by 2 into i square into dl by d theta so from this we can find the value of deflection theta is equals to 1 by 2 into i square divided by ks into dl divided by d theta so from this we understand that theta is directly proportional to i square all other quantities are going to be constant. So, theta is directly proportional to I square. So, the deflection angle is proportional to square of the current. So, the torque is unidirectional, whatever may be the polarity of current, it is going to be unidirectional. So, that is, uh, uh, that's, uh, it does not affect the deflection direction. So, when it is a uh, minus uh, value, it is going as, as we square the value, it is going to become positive. So, polarity is not going to be uh, affect the uh, torque. And uh, the errors uh, in moving iron instruments are uh, uh, your hysteresis error, temperature error, strain magnetic field error, frequency error, uh, eddy current error. These are the errors, uh, I mean, uh, causes for errors in the moving ion instrument. <coughs> and coming to the advantages of moving ion instrument, uh, the same instrument can be used for both AC and DC measurement. Uh, this we have already seen in permanent magnet moving coil. It can be used both for DAC and DC, whereas uh, your permanent magnet moving coil is used only for DC measurement. And torque weight ratio is high, hence the error due to friction is going to be very small. And it is used for wide range of measurement and it is cheaper uh, than other instruments. The construction is going to be very simple and robust as there is no current carrying uh, in the moving part and it is going to have high accurate, uh, high, it, is going to, it is going to be the high accurate instrument and instruments are available with 240 degree circular scales. That is the scale of uh, your uh, uh, instrument will be of the angle of 240 degree. That is what uh, it is being mentioned here. These are some of the advantages of your moving iron instrument. And coming to disadvantages of your moving iron instrument, the scale of moving iron instrument are not uniform. And uh, it is cramped at lower ends. Uh, so uh, remember the instrument what we have seen in uh, lab uh, in your uh, B triple lab or uh, your uh, EP lab, some of the instrument will be having at the starting point. It is it is not uniform. It is uh, very smaller compared to the other uh, other uh, readings in the same scale. So it is cramped. So at that point, uh, the value of accuracy will be missing. So so at the lower end, uh, there will be no accuracy in reading. That is what one of the disadvantage of your moving iron instrument. And subject to serious errors like hysteresis, frequency error and stray magnetic field. It is subjected to some errors uh, which causes, uh, uh, I mean, uh, 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 I mean it causes of uh, error uh, which can affect the operation of your uh, moving ion instrument. And the non-linearity in BH curve, that is flexibility and uh, H curve you know, of ion leads to your uh, uh, deflection torque not exactly proportional to your I square value. And uh, therefore that will be uh, the missing of accuracy in the system. And difference between the DC and AC calibration occurs uh, due to inductance of meter. So that will be the deflection between uh, DC, DC value as well as AC value calibration uh, will occur in the induction of meter. Hence, the meter should be calibrated for every frequency. So uh, if, if the meter is uh, meant to calculate uh, at one frequency and the uh, instrument is operating at other frequency, then there will be uh, a error in reading. So we have to calibrate the input frequency as well as the meter frequency. Then only we can get accurate value. That is one of the main disadvantages of your moving ion instrument. 